Welcome to the Sessler Session, the place where political correctness goes to die. Uh, I'm Jared Sessler, congressional candidate for Washington's 4th District. And if, uh, if you're unmasked, unvaccinated, canceled, or just sick and tired of being told what to do, then let's talk. I'd uh, love to hear your comments. Go ahead and hit that like button and uh, let's get into this. I'm sure that some of you uh, have heard about the interview I did with Carl Dresch. Uh, some of you know of uh, the, the video conversation I did with him. He was one of the January 6th uh, prisoners that was uh, released from jail while we were at the DC jail filming a, uh, an informational awareness video. Well, guess what? That video was getting literally tens of thousands of views per hour, and now it has been shadow banned or whatever they call it on YouTube. Uh, and we literally watched the numbers going crazy, crazy up, and then they actually started dropping as if you could take away views from a video that's already been viewed. I'm not sure how they do that, but uh, that's the way Big Daddy operates. If you haven't seen it yet, then go to my website or Rumble and make sure to check it out. Leave a comment and, because I do read them all for sure. While I'm on the topic of Carl, uh, Carl Dresch, I have an exciting update for you. He's going to be with us on the Sessler session in an upcoming episode, actually next week, same time, same place. I know a lot of you have been asking how he's been doing uh, since he's gotten out. And so he's going to talk a little bit about that. And apparently he's got some more interesting stories that you'll definitely want to hear more on that later. So next week. One more thing, for those of you who are local here in Washington State, my wife and I are going to be at the Lincoln Day Dinner with Trey Gowdy this Saturday in Yakima. Uh, he's going to be, it's going to be the place to be this weekend for sure. And if you and maybe your spouse would like to join us for dinner with some good conversation, let me know in the comments during this show. I've actually saved two seats at our table uh, just for you, uh, one of the guests to our show. So we'd love to have you come and, and uh, join us for that dinner with, with uh, us and with Trey Gowdy. Uh, so make sure you reach out, uh, you know, during the show in your in the comments, and then we'll let you know after the show who we pick. Uh, so let me know if you're interested. Uh, let's see. No less exciting than Carl, even though he's never been uh, detained in a D.C. jail, I think. I'll have to ask him. Is my guest today. It's really exciting to have Lumberjack Logic's Neil Johnson here on the first ever Sessler session. This guy is the real deal, and I encourage you to check out his shows on Locals. He's also on YouTube, but, you know, Big Daddy's watching, so go ahead and subscribe to him on Locals to get the full scoop. And don't forget to follow my show on YouTube, Rumble, and other social media platforms. Uh, and, and remember, as I said, uh, YouTube, please make sure you click the sub click the subscribe and smash that bell icon so you never miss an episode. Uh, it will definitely be worth it. I was on Neil's show a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we were talking about the Constitution, we talked about mask mandates, we talked about January 6th detainees, you name it. We talked about it all. It was a long show. It was really great. Uh, Louis Gomer, uh, representative from Texas, was supposed to be on there with us, but uh, he couldn't make it. I'm going to post a link to that show in the description so you can check it out. Uh, but before we go to Neil, I want to give you a few updates about stuff that's been happening nationally and right here in the great state of Washington. And remember, I know I'm going to bug you about this, but hit that bell icon, subscribe, and make sure you hit like. Uh, and be sure to look at other channels in the description as there are only certain topics that, you know, Big Daddy will allow us teenagers to talk about here. So let's talk about current updates. Uh, Mr. Illegitimate himself today was out on camera, rolled himself out of the basement. And rumor was that he was supposed to come out with six life-changing announcements today. Um, it may have been him doing the math, but we will just call it six and not squabble over details since the demolition party doesn't seem to be too into details. Uh, let's see. So the extra information on vaccine mandates today. All federal employees are required. Uh, this is really maybe at least a triple-edged sword. Uh, we can talk more about that. Uh, all employers with a hundred or more employees need to be make sure that their employees are vaccinated or produce a negative test every week 
or face a $14,000 fine. Crazy. Authoritarianism at its best. All healthcare workers need to be vaccinated. All Head Start teachers need to be vaccinated. Seems like just a desperate distraction from the absolute debacle in Afghanistan. As bad as it is, uh, or as bad as this is, it's not hard, that is a story of a pregnant American woman not allowed to get home from Afghanistan. They're hoping the right will, will go ballistic on this and forget what's actually happening in Afghanistan and what's happening right here on the eve of 9-11. So speaking of 9-11, it seems odd that the current state of things, that this illegitimate administration is not more concerned about the threat right here in America and throughout the world uh, on Christians and Americans this weekend. I think I might be concerned about that if I was in charge of the, the, the greatest country on the planet of the earth that's under siege from uh, you know, the Taliban. Crazy under siege, meaning, you know, we're just letting the Taliban run all over us in Afghanistan and across the world. And of course, the southern border is open. So who knows coming across there, uh, about 6 million people a year uh, unchecked. Instead, they want to puppet the points that are making people so utterly happy in Australia and France and Germany and Philippines. I'm sure you've all seen the videos, all while completely ignoring the clear and present data from Israel that defies all of their so-called logic. Uh, that's all vaccine information uh, is what I'm referring to out of Israel, one of the largest and most predominantly vaccinated countries in the world with, guess what, the most COVID uh, incidences currently. Very interesting. So let's get into what's happening right now in Afghanistan. The Taliban has announced an interim government in Afghanistan declaring the country is an Islamic emirate. For those who don't know what emirate is, it's Arab Arabic means land of emir or king. In this case, I'm assuming it will be a tribal leader deploying what amounts to be an Islamic monarchy that will obviously be under Sharia law, which is such a wonderful thing. Not. Uh, the emirate will be led by Muala Muhammad Hassan Akuhund, one of the movement's founders, whom I don't obviously respect enough to, to pronounce his name correctly, but uh, that's okay. I'm sure he'd mess mine up too. Who is on the UN blacklist? That means they're probably buying them dinner in a fancy restaurant. The interior minister is going to be the feared and FBI wanted leader, uh, the Haqqani militant group. Okay, this sounds like it's turning out great. Taliban's new defense minister is the son of Muhalla Omar, the legendary one-eyed figure who led the Taliban at the time of 9-11 20 years ago. I mean, this is literally turning into the League of Villains right here. In a statement on uh, one of the top Taliban leaders, whose name I'm not even going to try to pronounce, uh, it's much more difficult than the other one, said that they would respect international laws and treaties that are not in conflict with Islamic law and the country's national values. Okay, so that really, uh, of course, actually means, you know, screw international laws and treaties, we're going to do whatever we want and take this thing right back to the Middle Ages. The worst effect, as we know, is going to be on women and, of course, on Christians. Uh, I mean, it's ridiculous. The left will act like uh, if they use the wrong made up pronoun or someone that someone may need therapy as a result uh, in order to get over it. Meanwhile, no one is talking about the thousands of Afghan Christians who have just been served a death warrant. Uh, yeah, unbelievable. I read the, an article by Glenn Beck's charity actually, or I, uh, that was written about uh, Glenn Beck's charity actually doing some amazing work in this area. According to his Facebook pages, his charity, uh, the Nazarene Fund has, uh, and the Mercury One, uh, they've evacuated 5,100 Christians and other vulnerable religious minorities from Afghanistan with the help of donors who, according to him, have given more than $24 million. Thank God for that. I mean, that's the difference between a government and a true charity. Americans are really the most giving people in the world, and the government only mucks it up uh, when they get involved, as we all know. The other issue, I guess, uh, the biggest blunder of this whole disaster of the withdrawal is that there are still at least a 1,000 Americans and Afghans who are who helped America are now stranded in Afghanistan. 
Representative Mike McCall uh, of Texas had said on Sunday that there are six planes filled with Americans and Afghan interpreters that are literally being held hostage by the Taliban. Oh, I didn't see that on the news anywhere. I'm, must be a rumor. I cannot even in the history of our nation remember a time when the military abandoned American citizens in a hostile country and just left. And let me say, as a military veteran, I know without a shadow of a doubt that it is not the servicemen and women who wanted to leave. This is the choice of this pathetic, wicked administration and the corrupt military leaders who have been bought and paid for, who have made war into a business. So um, according to McHale, uh, the Taliban was not letting the planes depart until its demands were met. And I wonder what those could be. Maybe money, maybe legitimacy, you know, to legitimize their government. Who knows? Meanwhile, Mr. Illegitimate is hemorrhaging on about so-called virus stuff. Unbelievable. So, Neil, we're sitting here 20 years later, just a few days before 9-11. And as far as I can see, we are in the worst off now. We are worse off now than we were when the towers fell. We just handed a billion plus in weapons and data to the Taliban, probably to ISIS, and these people are already have a vendetta against the U.S. So, what's your take on the situation? Well, I mean, shoot, we we didn't hand them just a billion. I mean, it's eighty-five billion dollars worth of military hardware. We're talking Blackhawks, Apaches, C one thirties. I mean, it just. What was it? Six hundred thousand small arms drones. I mean, our drone technology now in the hands of of international terrorists who are are running this country. And you're right; it is it is considerably worse off than it was before. Because if you look at the map of the Taliban controlled area back in two thousand and one, and you look at the map of the Taliban controlled area now, it's it's not even close. I mean, back then they had maybe ten percent of the country. And now they're controlling 90 some odd percent. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's crazy. I, I have to say, and not to make too much light of this, but I have to ad, at least admit that this thought did go through my mind. Did you see any of the videos of our military trying to train these Afghan forces in just simple things like doing jumping jacks together and kind of doing... I mean, like from was, years ago, you mean? Those? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yep. it was kind of messy, right? And so I, I, I immediately went to the idea of, okay, one of those guys is going to try to fly a Black Hawk helicopter. Yeah, yeah, they not, did. This could not. Oh, they did it, huh? Oh yeah, no, they're flying the Black Hawk. Didn't you see the video of the guy hanging off the skids? Yeah, I was hoping guy... that wasn't real. Yeah, no, that's totally real. And uh, I actually spoke with Colonel Waldron because I did an interview with him, and he used to pilot uh, Black Hawk helicopters. Uh, that was part of his deal before he went into uh, the more of the uh, psyops and informational warfare side and whatnot. But uh, he had stated that because I asked him specifically, I said, it, it, "You can't just get in a Blackhawk and fly it." I said, "Who are these people?" I mean, he—it's a six-week training. It's six weeks to train to fly a Blackhawk. He said, "I mean, you yeah. could maybe get it up, but you're not going to be able to get it down successfully." Yet they were, and. Um, he just told me, he said, Neil, these aren't your average, average talents. And he said, you know, Afghanistan is kind of the melting pot of the world. Um, and, you know, you have a, mm. it's, you know, and if you go back to the time before the Taliban and you look at pictures from Afghanistan, it was very cosmopolitan. You had a lot of different people there. They, they had a life and then it all uh, became shattered, obviously. But, you know, yeah. we, here's the thing. This isn't just incompetence this isn't just a dereliction of duty this is a pre-planned premeditated debacle okay we look at it as a debacle they look at it as success because there is no possible way on the face of god's green earth if you or i as laymen with limited uh not i'm not saying intelligence meaning capacity but limited intelligence meaning the insight that they have Okay, so they saw the Taliban coming from Pakistan for three weeks. They've got satellite imagery. They could see these people forming up. They knew exactly what was going on, Jared. And this is what happened. This is the result. So they knew 
They not only allowed it to happen, they aided and abetted the happening by turning over 85 billion worth of military hardware to them and then got out of their way. And now, yeah, not only six planes. And then they're trying to tell us that 200 Americans are left behind. It's a handful, Jen Psaki said. But the fact of the matter is it's thousands. It's thousands yeah. of Americans that are left behind. Yeah. No, this so, is worse. This is criminal yeah, guess, behavior. Yeah. What What do you think? I uh, have a couple of questions for you. But one, what do you think the big picture is? What do you think the end game? If they're setting the Taliban up to be destructive and in this way, and they were purposely sort of fueling this fire, what exactly do you think their end game is? What is it that they want to happen? So I, I obviously only know what I know, but it appears to be a complete money laundering scheme and a China empowerment scheme. And we all know that Joe, Jay Bribes, I call him Jay Bribes, he's, he's in deep to China. I mean, you've got uh, Hunter's Art selling for half a million dollars and it's crappy. Okay, so mm-hmm. obviously that's a money laundering scheme. Um, you know, hey, I'll sell you one of my photos for half a million dollars, Jared. I mean, they're better than Hunter's artwork. I mean, come on. Let's do an auction. I'll, Going I'll do once. A one of a kind yeah, piece yeah, for you. Yeah, oh but, my goodness. But no, we, we are at the point, and in, in speaking with Colonel Waldron about this too, and obviously he knows a lot more than me, and he was actually involved in helping get American citizens out working with those private entities. Okay, that was what he was doing. That's why I couldn't have him on the show for a number of weeks. For a couple of weeks there, he was hard to get a hold of because he was too wrapped up in Afghanistan and trying to get people out of there. Mm-hmm. But, you know, he said, look at the minerals, Neil. He said, so the largest deposits of lithium are in that country. And now China has come out. They've already been with China and said, you know, this is our greatest international partner. Well, China needs lithium because of all the electronics. And now with the, um, the cars, you know, the electronic cars, they're using lithium ion. So there is so much mineral deposits, so many mineral deposits. In fact, I could probably dig up this map I've got of it for you if you need it. But uh, the mineral deposits in Afghanistan are enormous. They're vast. The wealth that is sitting in the ground over there. And so now China is going to have access to that. Through the so Taliban. there's two different, yeah, two different splinters there. So one would be a potential cause could be if they keep Afghanistan in unrest, then they have this very easy, inexpensive flow of minerals that they can extract out of the country, right? If, if Afghan is successful <laughs> and operating and protected and autonomous, then, then maybe those minerals wouldn't be available or maybe they would cost China more money. So that's one, that's one way. Another one is the military industrial complex and, you know, the, the obvious fact that, you know, we have to replace the military equipment that was, that was left over there. And so, you know, that's going to cost taxpayer dollars that goes to American contractors. Those companies are owned by Americans or maybe other people. And so that just is sort of this, this, what you're talking about in terms of this money laundering path. So there's two different diversions there of how money flows, but is that it? Or could there be some other reason why they wanted the Taliban to be successful? Well, you know, I mean, we all know that, and and this is not, okay, this is not conspiracy. This whole idea of the global reset, I mean, uh, you know, Carl Schwab wrote a book, COVID-19 and the Great Reset. I mean, the the Great Reset is real. And so is this all part of their plan dealing with, uh, you know, because we know now we've seen that that Fauci, uh, you know, and the gain of function uh, research, uh, all of that took place. Um, you know, he, he's on record of lying to us countless times now. Uh, Rand Paul's taken him to the mat on the Senate floor. You know, so we've got yeah. we've got you know we're we're kind of limited right now. We, you know, the Uniparty is real. I mean, we saw 19 Republicans cross lines to vote with the Democrats on that on that glorious multi-trillion-dollar bill. Okay, so all part of the Uniparty. We've got Lindsey Graham now saying that. Um, we're, we need to go back into Afghanistan militarily. Okay, so what's his end game? Um, and it seems like he'll say anything to stay relevant. So, you know, we're, we're dealing with the Uniparty and they're all profiting. And I yeah. don't know completely how it works because I'm not sitting there in Washington meeting with lobbyists and all that garbage. But uh, we need people in Washington who are going to represent we the people, do the will of we the people, and act in the best interests of we the people, yeah, not exactly. in the best interests of themselves. 
And that's what we're missing yeah. right now in Washington. Yeah. Yeah, folks. So I'm, I'm with uh, Neil Johnson here from Lumberjack Logic. He's got his own show on uh, locals and YouTube and a bunch of other things. Look up Lumberjack Logic. He's got some great stuff. I have even purchased some of his hardware. You can get some too. Uh, and go ahead and make sure you, if you're on YouTube, hit that bell icon and smash that like button. No matter what platform you're watching on, appreciate it. Throw your comments in. We're going to be here for a little bit. Uh, discussing uh, between us, and then we're going to take some questions. So along those lines, Neil, uh, take yourself for a second to a circumstance where uh, President Trump was in the White House, and we had Americans, we had a hostage situation, we had vulnerable people, uh, Christians from other nations uh, behind enemy lines. What do you think would be, how do you think this would be handled differently? like 180 degrees now this is conjecture because obviously i'm not president trump uh so you know stating how you would handle but you can go off past past uh circumstances and how he handled things i don't think he'd be taking a lot of crap uh the people would be rescued because he put he really did i mean for for you know people can talk about his faults or whatever and you know I'll, you know maybe he shouldn't have tweeted so much but i think he was the right man for the job because I think it was a time of separating the wheat from the chaff, okay? And it's exactly what America needed. And all, whenever Trump did something, he made the left come out more. So you were able to see them for what they were. Because if you'll remember, Hillary Clinton was always good at hiding who she was, right? Mm -hmm. She seemed reasonable when she was in front of a camera. But yeah. if you have heard the inside stories of what happened on election night up there in her hotel room, throwing chairs, screaming expletives, and all of that when she realized she had lost that election, okay? Um, her persona in front of the camera is much different than her persona, you know, away from it. And that's that's what we deal with a lot of Washington. And that's, you know, this is quite frankly why we, we have so many uh, trust issues. Like, do you remember, have you ever watched The Avengers? Yeah. Okay, right. So you know when uh, um, what's it, Wesley? Is it Wesley? Not Wesley Snipes. Who is it? The the guy who plays uh, the uh, no what? What's his name? Come on, the, the main character uh, uh, who's kind of the head of Shield, but uh, well, yeah, it's on the tip of my tongue. My wife would know what it is because she's good with all that name stuff. But well, he's he goes. <laughs> He's he's talking about uh, Robert Redford's character, and he goes and he yeah. Sees somebody him put it in the chat if they know what the name is. Yeah, and he said he said, you know, after the guy's up there saying all these things, and and he said, yeah, one time, you know, he turned down a Nobel Peace Prize because he said, peace is not an achievement; it's a responsibility. These are the kind of things that give me trust issues. He said, I remember that line, but it's one of the best lines of the movie because it's so true. These people can yeah. pose so well. Their method acting is off the charts. And then behind yeah. the scenes, all they care about is enriching themselves. It's sick. Yeah. It's wrong. It's yeah, disgusting. It is very sick. Yeah, I was so disgusted last year when I was watching, uh, let's see, Adam Schiff, uh, Jerry Nadler, Pelosi, Schumer, I mean, just watching. And these people, they've gotten to a place now where they just blatantly lie, just openly and blatantly lie. So let me let me ask you a question. You mentioned the Uniparty. Would you agree that the Uniparty is synonymous with the swamp if somebody wanted to understand what you mean by that definition or by that term? Well, absolutely. But see, here's the problem. And this is why it is so important. I went off uh, on a on a podcast today on my uh, Lumberjack Logic, but I, my, my main channel is actually just my name, Neil Johnson. I have a backup Lumberjack Logic, but the show is Lumberjack Logic. Anyways, I did a live stream and the, the whole precinct strategy. And then also I found a tremendous article out of Politico talking about school board meetings and what we need, because what the left had done so well is they had groomed candidates through school boards, small town mayoral races, city councils, and I read about this 20, 25 years ago that they were doing this. This was their whole strategy. Yeah. They were organized. They were doing this. So yeah. now, though, 
republic I, and the problem is as conservatives we tend to be free thinkers we tend to be individualists uh we don't think as much in terms of collectively look i just want to go hunt elk you know i'm going elk hunting next week yeah i want to live my life i want to experience freedom go hunt, do your thing do the thing yeah but they don't think that way and, and yeah. you have to understand that politics is their religion yeah see so you know name... you go to church and you know you think like yeah. god and family right they think <laughs> yeah, that's what we think. Well, what's interesting about it too, and by the way, the name is Samuel L. Jackson. One of our uh, one of Thank our you. viewers uh, put it up there for us. But uh, yeah, so thanks for that. Uh, my wife totally would have gotten that very very quickly. Uh, yeah, so they are. It's like a whole nother uh, type. I don't even know what you want to call it. It's not a. It's not a different gender. It's not a different nationality. It's just a whole different a whole different perspective, right? And and I've been saying that for weeks now about these Taliban, you know, these people will literally go home at night, celebrate, eat a giant steak and, and, you know, have a great time when they get a chance to kill an American or a Christian and the people in America who haven't served in the military and don't understand or not paying attention, uh, do not understand the potential threat that we're under. So let me just pivot here and ask you something else. How concerned are you for violence in in america in afghanistan or anywhere else against americans or against christians do you think there's a threat right now it's tough to say i mean we we shipped in a lot of unvetted uh afghan afghanistan folks obviously well we also and have not, the southern border open with hundreds of thousands yes. of people trekking across it every single month so well we're fortunate in that we have a second amendment and so long as our Second Amendment is secure, okay, even with, you know, uh, you know, it's like when I go to my church, I, I am in the back and I watch the doors and I just constantly head on a swivel. I'm checking things out. It kind of makes worship a little tougher. I'll be, you know, yeah, but yeah. It's, it's one of those things where, you know, we have enough armed citizens who are just able to keep an eye out for things that, um, a lot of those things can be dealt with. Um, you know, you look at Australia right now, right? I mean, tyrannical government running roughshod over everybody, everybody's rights, but they, what was it, 20 years? Well, more than 20, 25 years ago, back in, was it 96, I think it was, where they had that mass shooting and then brought in all those draconian gun laws. Yeah. And so, yeah, I mean, is there the possibility? I mean, is it, I don't think it's the biggest concern we have right now. I think, the biggest concerns we have are, uh, uh, are are two that we can't talk about on YouTube. That's why I have a locals channel because <laughs> we we cover all of that over there. Um, you know, we we used to joke. We used to use uh, code words like uh, erection frog and stuff. You know, to, you know <laughs> <laughs> it was just. But it, it's. Yeah, you know, those crazy there's... people that think there's something wrong with that uh, little, you know, counting thing that happened last year. Yeah, like this. The oh number yeah, line. there you go. Yeah, yeah, it's it's you know so this is but but it's real and I the problem is when you when you've been in it as much as I have and when you've researched it as much as I have and when you've seen the the tally sheets and the paper images and all of that. You know, you don't know what the totals are, but you know that there was a lot wrong. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then you just saw the report that came out of AZ on, on canvassing and so on. So there's that. The other thing is, you know, the whole thing with Fauci and gain of function. And now we have this deal coming down the pike and, you know, you're supposed to take this, uh, you know, experimental shot. Let's just call it what it is. I mean, I, I can't, yeah. uh, I can't call it anything else. And then you've got, uh, and I, you know, like you're saying, you said earlier, you talked about it being a distraction right now. There are so many distractions. I don't know what's the distraction and what's the real thing, but I really think, uh, Jared, that this is all going back to some sort of, it's too, it's too well organized. It's too, I actually think if you here, I'm going to go off the rails here for you. I uh -huh. actually think that the conspiracy is straight from the devil himself, because I don't think any man has organized this all. There's enough 
corruption in the heart of man right now as we've kicked God to the curb here in America that, uh, you know, like irregularities, if you will, or the F word, right, uh, as we call it, uh, you know, because we can't say that word on YouTube. Yeah. You know, but... but They can say know, it in uh, at high school football games, though. Yes. But the problem with all that is you, uh, you're looking at something where with all of this going on, when the heart of man is so corrupted, you don't have to have like some mass grand conspiracy. I mean, there's just enough individual actors to pull this off at this point. Yeah. Just think, think about the momentum. So, you know, when we were going through sort of the Clinton Bush era, even into the Obama era, it was so subtle, right? Right. It was so subtle, you know, the, yes. the, the negative progress that the left was making. And then 2016 happened and they freaked out and they lost, right? Even though they, the data shows that that, that election too was questionable, uh, which there's data that shows that. And so I think they expected a different outcome uh, because they were manip manipulating it. Uh, and then when 2020 came around, it was, you know, once they completed the, the coup or the heist or whatever you want to call it, it was like full throttle, like, oh boy, we got to make up for the last four years. It's like, we've only got, you know, I don't know if, you know, if the people that are running the show are so old, they're worried they're not going to live much longer and they want to see this thing through or what, but <laughs> doesn't it seem like they just like, all right, let's just shift from second to fifth and throw the grass pedal down. Cause we're just going to go. Well, I think one thing that, that uh, conservatives need to understand. And so again, this is a difference in thinking. Because you don't think about going, and I've talked with you enough, uh, both on my show and then not on the show. And, and uh, of course, we were together in Sioux Falls and, and had some good conversations there that night. But we're not thinking the way they think. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things that's really hard for people, um, conservatives, and to understand is this lust for power. OK, because, you know, you can understand like the lust for money or, or you know, people uh, have impulses they lust for, whatever that is, be it food, be it uh, sex, be it whatever. OK, I mean, in, in, in some of those things are, you know, just but to understand fully that lust for power, I, I don't think a lot of people get it because they just want to live their life. But these people, yeah. you have to go back to Obama when he won. Now, remember, he had two years to ram Obamacare through. And there was the corn husker kickback. I'm going to bring you back to some of these terms. Remember that? The corn husker kickback, the way to buy off yeah. the senator out of Nebraska. Mm -hmm. Then there was the Louisiana purchase to buy off the senator in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember the other one. But one of the things that Obama understood and one of the things that the left understands is they understand that their power is limited for a limited time and they use it full tilt. The consequences yeah. be damned. Because they understand that yeah. politics as a game, everybody has these short-term memories, and people get real fickle, okay? And so it's like, oh, yeah, Trump was great, and then, uh, then he's not. And oh, he sent out a mean tweet, and that's bad. And then, you know, this whole thing. But I, it's yeah. like two months well, they is also a know lifetime that, that, in politics. Yeah, they realize that everyone has a breaking point where they can be bought. You know, there's yeah. something they can use to leverage almost everyone. Yeah. So... But Crazy. I just think that they they use they use that power more aggressively than conservatives do, and as a result, unfortunately, uh, that that works for them. Uh, yeah. Did like did you hear? Just pivot a little bit here for those watching. Please uh, smash that like button, hit the hit the bell icon, whatever platform you're watching. Make sure you follow us. Um, definitely again, hit I'm the here. like, folks. It makes yeah. a huge difference on YouTube. I know, especially if you hit the like, I mean, it will spread this content out more. So if you like what uh, what Jared's got going on here and his run for Congress and you believe in that, by all means, hit like because that will expand the message. And the other thing is in YouTube, uh, and I know this because, you know, I've been doing YouTube for a while now and I can watch this time and time again, is if you just write in a comment, just where you're from, you know, Yakima or something. I don't know. Just Just chime in with where you're from. That comment, any type of engagement like that will increase, will pump that algorithm and get this content out there more. So just do that for Jared. It's one of the things that's really easy for you to do. Okay. 
I mean, send him yeah. some money too. I mean, it takes money to win races, but, <laughs> but by all means, you know, send, send the poor, poor guy some money. Uh, cause uh, he's up, he'll be up against big dollars, but, yeah. uh, but it's really easy to hit the like button. So at least, yeah, I appreciate that. And make sure you, you look for Neil on his lumberjack logic channel on uh, locals as well. Join that just a couple dollars a month. Uh, you know, it's very interesting. So I'm running for Congress in uh, Washington's fourth district. I'm running against a Republican who voted to impeach President Trump. Uh, I have yet to meet uh, one single person in the district who will vote for him again. Uh, so that bodes very well for me. It's a conservative district. They care about uh, defending traditional American values. And I believe they like the message that I have, which is the great American restoration. That's what we're working on. That's what we're doing. And I believe that's what we have to drive for. And uh, so obviously uh, donations for my campaign support is welcome uh, and all that with, with Neil, you know, we're, we're just, we're dads leading our family, doing our thing. Neil is uh, making a good bit of his living on researching this information and sharing it and trying to, trying to get the truth out there. And I feel like he's doing a great job with that. And uh, you know, that's, that's the reason why I wanted to kick off this Sessler session uh, which I plan on doing regularly uh, with Neil, uh, first of all, because I learned so much from him on on uh, how he's operating his show, but also uh, he's just such a wealth of knowledge. And so on that note, uh, one of the things that you uh, mentioned is, uh, well, let's just shift for a second to uh, this conversation that supposedly uh, Biden had with, uh, president, the president, uh, what's his name? Ghani or something like that from, yeah. Yeah. Uh, from Pakistan the, or from Afghan, from the Afghan. former Afghanistan do you, president. Do you feel, yeah. Tell, tell me what your take on that was, what you think or what you've heard actually happened. And if you feel like that's an impeachable offense. Well, it's obviously it's gotta be impeachable. If that's not impeachable, then what is, I mean, he, he basically was telling, the president of another country to lie to make him look better. Uh, I mean, they're, they're sitting there doing fake Russia collusion nonsense with Trump for all those years. Okay. And saying yeah, that's impeachable. Yeah. And then he says to peacefully and patriotically protest and that's impeachable. Um, yeah. So what, this... what exactly did Biden tell Ghani or what's being reported? <clears throat> well, he, he flat out told Ghani, he said, um, I, I should pull up the direct quote, but basically he, he asked him whether it's true or not. Okay. That was the words he used, whether true or not, he wanted him to give a better impression of what was going on in Afghanistan, whether wow. that was true or not to control the narrative. Um, he, he literally asked a foreign leader to lie so that he could create a different narrative for the American people. That transcript see what has been released. Yeah, see what that happens is not when you when news. you uh, you illegitimately snag leadership of the most powerful country in the world, and you put essentially teenagers in charge. You end up with these kind of results. It's really really crazy. Uh, no, it what sucks. You, uh, yeah, it sucks. It's very bad. I mean, this is horrible. When people start to lose their lives, it's a whole lot worse than how do we fix the national debt? How do we, you know, how do we make laws that you know, suit traditional America while, you know, dealing with this anti-God progressive left that, you know, is a fa fairly small but loud group and they, and they have such a, a stranglehold on our communications, you know, how do we, how do we deal with that? So uh, what do you think, uh, what do you think Biden's plan really was, or do you think he had one in terms of the exit? We talked about this a little bit earlier, but tell me if you think that's, yeah, any, I, that's any different. I honestly believe that his plan for the exit was pulled off flawlessly. I mean, he, he basically was able to create a, a power there in the Middle East and an alignment with China. And he did everything. Uh, and it wasn't really him. I shouldn't even say that with Biden because Biden, as you can tell, doesn't, doesn't know some days where he's at or how to talk or anything like that. So he's he's kind of a, a puppet with a puppet master pulling strings, it seems, uh, because he does not have the mental capacity to pull off what he just pulled off. But again, he pulled off something that was actually what they wanted to happen, whoever they is. 
which I think deals with uh, the international banking cartel, China, you know, a, a number of players. So I, I think he, he got what he wanted, sadly. I mean, it, it's, it's crazy to say this. This is like the president of the United yeah. States selling America. But I, I don't see this. I, I don't see another outlook on this, another option. Nobody. Yeah, one, I think one of the. Yeah, one of the proving points of it, I think, in your perspective, because I maybe a week ago, I might have disagreed with this or something or might have tried to give them the benefit of the doubt. But every time we give them the benefit of the doubt, they prove us wrong, that they really are either as, uh, you know, utterly shamelessly stupid as they seem or they really do have a plan, as you say, to uh, to, you know, run this thing into the ground and create some circumstances to either make money or gain power or something. So. Uh, this, uh, the guys from Bagram, which was literally a military fort, uh, they acted like cowards in the middle of the night when they left and they literally just turned the lights off and ran. So here's a description from the AP of the Bagram airport. I'm not sure if you're familiar with this, but, uh, on display on Monday was a massive facility, the size of a small city that had been exclusive, uh, exclusively used by the U S and NATO. The sheer size is extraordinary with roadways weaving through barracks and past hangar like buildings. There are two runways over a hundred parking stalls for fighter jets known as uh, revertments because of the blast walls uh, protecting each aircraft. One of those two runways is 12,000 feet uh, of, of almost three quarters of a mile long and was built in 2006. There's a, a passenger lounge, a 50 bed hospital and a giant hangar the size uh, hangar size tents uh, filled with supplies and furniture. So they just walked out. So what in the what what, in, what, what are they thinking there? What why would they do that? Well, again, to 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 basically turn it over to the Taliban. And you know what's interesting about that is, so we've heard a lot. Um, I, I really encourage people to go. Okay, I, I don't know how many of your audience knows really of locals, but. Um, my channel over there is just lumberjacklogic.locals.com and go listen to the interview I did with Colonel Waldron. I mean, you're talking to somebody who's got real on the ground experience there as a Colonel. Okay. And, and walked me right through that. There was a, the first 18 minutes is on YouTube as well. You can check out that over there, which was also fantastic. I mean, it was, I, that's something I could actually cover on YouTube, but, uh, yeah. he, that, that, when you hear him d describe Afghanistan and, and what happened there and how this thing had to be planned out, there was no way that they didn't know the outcome. And I've been saying that all along. And then to have him confirm it to the level that he did, um, it's, you know, and, and the fact that they, they just gave up, uh, oh, what's, uh, what's the other airport there? Um, that was highly defensible and, and everything. So they, the Cabal, they the Cabal or Kabul. Yeah, whatever. I, I get, uh, I get lost some of it, but the, the bottom line is, you know, a much more defensible spot. So, and then to pull the military out before the citizenry, all of it. it yeah. What I, what I was think what I think I was getting at there with my point in that, which, you know, saying, you know, maybe a week or 10 days ago, I would have, I would have bought that it wasn't a plan was that, you know, if they weren't doing such a good job of completely ignoring the fact that we've got thousands of lives with a gun to their head right now, they're completely ignoring it. Never, ever in a time in history has America stood for something like that. It's always been the opposite. You know, you listen to, uh, I think it's Sean Hannity who says on a pretty regular basis that uh, America has an enormous amount of power, but it is unique to every other country that has ever existed because it has consistently used that power for good throughout the world. Now, does that mean that America is perfect and that they've never, we've never made mistakes or that we aren't making mistakes? No, but we've never ever had a situation like this where we had the opportunity, the clear and present dominance to be able to go in and save lives and protect lives and not done it. In fact, they're pivoting and they're talking about mask or mask mandates and, and jab mandates and all these kinds of things. 
while we're we're in my opinion i'm i'm much more pessimistic on the threat that we have in front of us right now uh while we're facing these these unbelievable and unprecedented threats from the outside you know so american people at this point are you know we've got threats from our own authoritarian you know turning totalitarian government uh regardless of the constitution and we've got foreign threats and meanwhile, we've put our police in handcuffs and our military is completely compromised, evidently, because I don't see anybody other than, you know, middle and lower rank uh, military people standing up and saying, what on earth is going on here? This is not the U.S. military. No, but I think another thing that needs to be said in and. uh you know, there's been a lot made about how the Afghan army just turned and ran and, and uh, Joe Biden said they don't have the will to fight. Um, again, in that interview with Waldron, I found out something that was totally different. So a lot of the the Afghan National Security Forces, the ANSF, they they were people, uh, they were patriots to their country. OK, mm -hmm. um, and they wanted a better Afghanistan. And uh, they were willing to fight, but it, it was the leaders that uh, Tuck Tail told everybody to get the heck out. They cut deals with the Taliban. Wow. And so, you know, you're, you're dealing, so just look at our military force. Do you think our guys wanted to leave while Americans were left behind on the ground? No, no, never. Is that, is that how know. our forces would have acted? No. So again, you're dealing with rank and file citizens um, who, who were, you know, looking for a brighter future because not everybody's on the side of the Taliban. In fact, there's plenty of tribal leaders who aren't and who don't like the Taliban over there. But, um, yeah. now we're at a point where, you know, their, their, their leadership just ran and left the bases that we left. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's terrible. Yeah. And, it's, and just the state of things right now is so challenging, you know, over, over the last year, We've seen our amazing, beautiful country shaken in ways we couldn't ever have envisioned. You know, we've faced an, a massive overreaction to a virus we've, that evidently now was designed, uh, which is just astounding to think about because then you have to start to think about, well, if it was designed, what was it designed for and how, how, how is it being used? And is this the intended use or was it some other use? And, you know, that's kind of crazy to think about that. And then there's the mask mandates that, you know, you go back all the way to the China, uh, or not the China, but the uh, Spanish flu and the results from that, more people died from the masks that they were requiring at that time than from the, the flu itself. It's just unbelievable the things that they're doing, the shutdowns, the lockdowns, the forced vaccinations, you know, defunding the police. So we basically take justice out of our, you know, situation. So now we have this massive crime you know, happening in the, in the cities. We have destru destruction of our cities by the burn loot murder crew and Antifa and the like. You know, we mm -hmm. have a, a stolen election. We have CRT and racism, which is racism. We have horrible sex ed for our kids. We have nothing but lies from the left, including their puppet media. You know, and those are just the things off the top of my head that we're facing. And so where do you think where where do you think the state of the general population in America is? Are they paying attention yet? Are they fearful? Are they just frustrated? Do they understand? Are they confused? Are they giving in? Where where do you think people are at? Well, there's what I want to believe. Um, there's there's uh, some some results I see to the contrary. So I guess to give my best summation on that. Um, I have talked to people who have resisted the jab. They say, well, we're just not. And they've, uh, they've lost their jobs over it and they found other work. Um, so I've seen people stand strong. I've also seen people cave. I talked to a friend, good friend who I just, uh, didn't think would be somebody who would cave. He, he owns a very successful business, but he was, uh, had a trip planned to go to the U S open with his kid for a graduation. Um, then New York came down with their mandates and everything, and he, he talked to the family, and they all still wanted to go, and he went and got it. Wow. So, I mean, just something as simple as that, you know, and, you know, I guess I wouldn't have. But, uh, you know, everybody's kind of making their decisions, and so some of those uh, those stick options are working uh and and that's that's sad. But, I mean, I want to believe that America gets restored. I want to believe that we're on the cusp of a great revival. Okay. 
Now, one of the things, you know, it's like in the Bible, it says faith is the evidence of things not seen, right? And then, mm -hmm. you know, faith without works is dead. So, you know, you, I keep working for that hope. Yeah. I mean, that's, this is what I do, right? But, you know, it can get really tiresome. It can get really tedious because you're not seeing as much progress as you want. I mean, I'm seeing wins. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I, there's plenty of wins to celebrate, too. Yeah. But on some of these grand scale things, we don't seem to be turning the corner. If I'm if I'm just if you're asking for just a point blank. Yeah, honest, I, I, mean, yeah I would I think I would agree that I feel like there's still too many spectators or we're not at a point yet where the field is being overrun. You know, there's still no. a lot of spectators who are watching, you know, people, uh, you know, people like me. Uh, and you and me, obviously hundreds and thousands of other people who are standing up and are being vocal and are taking actions and are, you know, making wins and, and making strides and things. But it definitely feels to me like there's still too many spectators. You know, there's too many people that are like, well, you know, I might lose my job if I speak up or, you know, if, you know, it's like you said, like, well, you know, I, you know, I have some friends who wanted to travel abroad and they're like, well, we couldn't travel if we didn't, you know, so we went like, uh, okay, but, you know, you know, maybe there isn't any big issue with this particular, you know, experimental thing. But the problem is, is the indoctrination and the pattern that they're establishing, you know, which started in our lifetimes with, with, uh, with the uh, annual flu, whatever you want to call it, the, the flu shot. You know, they started the, doing that. The what, Wuhan 15, 20 flu years jab. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, the, you know, the flu shot that oh, you're you know, talking when we were kids, flu. they didn't. Yeah. The flu shot. They didn't have any. They didn't have anything like that when we were kids, you know, and no. now they have, you know, you know, 15 what was it 20 years ago. They started every year, you know, you pay your 10 or 15 bucks and you get it used to be it was free. And then they started charging for it. And now you see these it lines just lined up. Yeah, you know, I, I got that one time and I, I felt horrible. I felt worse that year than, than any other. I'm like, how about if we just work on trying to be healthy and, you know. So, yeah, I would say one, you know, there is some progress. That progress there is some light at the end of the tunnel. First of all, I don't think the young people are stupid. Uh, you know, they've, they're only going to be lead, led astray for so long. And I think the evidence of their disgust with the lockdowns and the restrictions and the mandates over the last, you know, a year and a half has really spoken to the young people. And I believe that's going to come true in the ballot box in 2022 when these young people are like, yeah, we don't want any more of whatever that potion is uh, coming out of the demolition party. Uh, I well, think they that love potion a... number nine. I'll tell you that. Much. Yeah, exactly. I think that a lot of the people who are more mature, who have some wisdom and some experience behind them, like us, we've ran a business, we've grown a family, we've done some things in our life are like, oh, hold the train here. You know, let's see if we can just basically, you know, coax this baby to the next exit because we got some serious problems here and we need to get to an election as quick as possible because they're about to run this thing off the tracks. And so there's a lot of those people. Uh, so, in, you know, we got things going on in Texas, you know, the heartbeat bill, uh, which I think is a huge win. Uh, Massive. I, yeah, in my opinion, it doesn't go far enough, but it's definitely a step in the right direction. And, uh, you know, so I think that's good. And, you know, we're going to see more of that. But and, you know, the other thing I'll say, which I've been saying this for quite a while, is I love the fact that people are so focused on their states. They actually know that they have a state yes. legislature and they understand the difference between their state legislature and the federal Congress. They, they know how important their sheriffs are and how important the sheriffs are to be local elected locally. They know that they have city councils and school boards and hospital boards and they understand what a PCO is and that they have, you know, a state Republican Party and they have county Republican parties and they have chairs for each of those counties and that Republican Party. And there's places for them to plug in and get involved. They know all this stuff now. Like we didn't know any of this. You know, if you look at Seth Cashel's data and, he, and the way he lays out the, the voter registry over the last few years, the momentum is headed all in the right direction. Uh, so, I, you know, I think as much as I... I am pessimistic with you in terms of maybe more so our safety and security right now. I'm, I'm also very optimistic about, uh, about, you know, where we're going in the future. And I also believe that America is the new Israel, so to speak, if you want to look at it in sort of spiritual terms. And I think, uh, you know, the new, the new Israel or the new promise is one of grace. And I think that, uh, 
you know, God's mission and God's plan for America is very obvious. It's the same as it was 245 years ago. It's still the same thing today. And the problem is, is that a lot of the Americans have gotten complacent and we don't understand our role. You know, the people that are most excited about being American now, you know what they are? They're immigrants. Why mm -hmm. is it that Americans aren't as excited about being an American as somebody who gives up their citizenship from another country to be able to come and be an American? Unbelievable. Yeah. Well, so, they, they've experienced the worst. And so they come over here and, you know, to have some freedom, um, yeah. you know, but we, that's why we cannot, we can't lose. We, we cannot let those freedoms disappear. We just can't do it. We can't, we can't give up. We can't give in. Uh, the fight's too important. Yeah. It's too big. It's too vital. And uh, which yeah. is why we need better people. So I'm going to segue into Jared for Congress dot com. Thank you. I need that. Make a yeah. donation. Jared, yeah. No, seriously. Jared, yeah, JaredSessler.com or Jared for Congress, same thing. Make a contribution, get involved, volunteer. Uh, if you want to talk about other great candidates, maybe that are in your area, you know, we're, we're working on that stuff too. Uh, you know, we definitely need help with this campaign. You know, our situation is we're running against a Republican, so we don't get a lot of the, you know, sort of establishment help because they're they're responsible to support the the incumbent even if the incumbent voted for impeachment uh and will not win again uh so so we're truly a grassroots effort and uh, going after this thing but we're doing a great job and we have we have a lot of support behind us and a lot of momentum and we really appreciate any support that you know people want to put into this so go to jaredsessler.com we can put it up on the notes or the screen but jaredforcongress.com and Neil, super appreciative of you taking the time to come on tonight. Uh, Neil Johnson from Lumber Logic, Lumberjack Logic. And uh, look for that on Locals. Sign up for it. Uh, I think it's five bucks a month to join his deal. It's well worth it. He feeds his family with that. And uh, he's fighting the good fight. He's out there doing it. So, yeah, get involved and, uh, you know, appreciate everyone watching tonight and those that watch in the future. You know, all this information is is relevant. Don't hold it to us if things change and we didn't know it tonight, but, uh, uh, you know, thank God we have the opportunity to at least do this tonight right now. And, uh, you know, we're going to continue to fight this good fight and press forward. And I do believe with you, Neil, that we are going to win. So thanks everyone. Uh, Jared thanks. and Neil from, uh, the Sessler session here and, uh, appreciate it. Have a good night.